Hello, friends. I am going to work on the review, but actually, honestly, it's pretty late. So I'll probably just do a video of the front page and then I'll make a second video of the back page so that I'm not here for the rest of my life doing this. Hang on one second. I have something loud happening. Okay, so here we go. Um, so think about the verbs, like I said in class. You want to evaluate that. That means you're going to get a value, a number answer. It means you plug in the numbers and then use PEMDAS. So this is telling me to put a 5 in where there was an X and then to put a negative 3 where there was a Y. And so I'm going to just do my PEMDAS. So I'm going to do parentheses, exponents, multiplying, dividing at the same time, and then adding, subtracting at the same time. So this is going to turn into 20. Be careful here, the negatives actually cancel and that becomes positive 18, so I get a 38. Um, then here, I'm gonna be plugging in a two for x, which is getting squared, and then a four for nine, which is not getting squared, sorry, I am pulling up our class to see if we have an answer key online to make sure that you have access to that also. Um, sorry. I should have done this before the video, right? Oh, there is one. Okay. So now again, PEMDAS. So I need to do the multiplication, excuse me, the exponent first. And then I'll go ahead with my multiplication. So I'm going to end up with 12 minus 36, so negative 24. Here, I have my negative 3, and where there used to be an x, I'm putting in a 5. Where there used to be a y, I'm putting in a negative 3. I'm just putting these in to those places. So I don't have any exponents, so I'm just going to have negative 15, and then this becomes negative 6 because you have a negative times a positive. But when you take 15 minus 6, 1, you get negative 21. And you can um, use your calculator. So if, just be careful that you're asking it the right question. So this is simplifying. And if you remember I talked about that, there's mainly two things you would do. One, you distribute if you have to. And then you combine like terms. So I don't have to distribute in this first one because there are no parentheses. So these are both n's, 5n minus 8, n will be minus 3n. 10 plus 6, which are both just numbers, obviously, will be 16. So when I'm done simplifying, that's all I can do. That's as simple as it goes. Here I have some q squareds. So I'm going to put those together first. 18 and a negative 3 will turn into 15 q squareds. The only plain Q that I have is right here. Um, I just have the one of those. And then I have an 11 and a minus two, which turns into nine. Uh, same thing here, I'm gonna start with my Q squared. So I have 10 of them here, one more here. So that's 11 Q squareds. I have a negative four Q plus 2. So negative 4 plus 2 gives me negative 2q. And then the only number I have is the 11, and there's nothing to combine with it, so I have plus 11. Here I do need to distribute. So this becomes 5x minus 15y, and this becomes 8y minus 2x. So my two x terms are alike. They go together. They become 3x. My two y terms are alike and go together and become negative 7y. Here I have to be careful, not so much on this part. Here most of us will distribute this properly, but here you have to remember that you are distributing the, the negative along with it. So here these two cancel and become positive. So... I'm going to take my 10u and the other one, but they actually cancel out because it's 10u plus negative 10u. So that leaves me with a 15 and a positive 14w. So my answer is just that 29w that I get when I combine those. 
Same thing here. This one's pretty slick. So I have 28U plus 14W, but here I'm going to be really careful because that turns into negative 6U, but here the negatives cancel and I get 15W. So when I put them together, 28 minus 6 is 22Us, and then 14 plus 15 will be 29W. Okay, now my verb switches to solve. And in solving, I'm actually finding the value of the variable. So I'm going to go ahead here and try to get n alone by subtracting 11 to both sides. That turns into negative 20 because when you're at negative 9, you take away 11 more. So I divide by 5 and n is negative 4. This one's a little tricky. I'm going to distribute my 9. I want all the, all the t's together on one side, so I'll move these 9 over by subtracting. Negative 1 minus 9 more gives me negative 10 t's. I can add 2 to move that over. Now I have negative 10 t equals negative 70. So when I divide out the negative 10, my t comes out to be a positive 7. Here I have a little distributing to do here. This side's good to go. So I have 7x, and then I have minus, because of the negative sign, 56. I'm going to get all the x's to one side. So I'm moving this over by subtraction leaving me with negative 9x minus 11 equals negative 56. And then I'm going to go ahead and add over my 11. So I have negative 9x equals negative 45. And when I divide by that negative 9, I find out that x has a value of 5. And with all solving, you can go back and plug it in. Okay, this is where I'm solving for y, which really means move stuff around until you get y alone. So I kept saying you're not really mathing, you're moving. You are just moving things around until you get y alone. The negative 28 is attached to it, so it goes last. So the first thing that I can move over is the 12x by subtracting it. Now I have negative 28 times y equals, and you can either put the minus 12x in the front or in the back of the plus 40. So then here, I'm going to divide each piece by this negative 28. So that's gone. And I have done what they told me to do. which was get the y alone. This, the negatives cancel. 4 goes into both 12 and 27, so I get 3 over 7x. You can use your calculator to help you with that. And here the negatives do not cancel because there's only 1. And when you reduce that by 4, 40 divided by 4 is 10, and 28 divided by 4 is 7. So I got y alone. This is one of those tricky ones where somebody passed out all the Y's and now they want to collect them back. So collect them back in the front of the problem, leaving you with a 15 and a 2X. And that's multiplied by Y. So to get rid of multiplication, since we're trying to isolate or get that Y alone, I'm going to just divide it by that whole shebang. So this is gone. Y equals the 30 divided by 15 plus 2x. And your equation is not really a solving. It is finding um, the what, what you have when your y is all alone. All right. So this also has y spread out. So take it out front. So that leaves me with 7 minus 3x. That's multiplied to the y, so I'm going to divide that out to both sides. 
Here it cancels. On this side, nothing can help happen. So I get 10 over seven minus three X as my final and correct answer. Okay, now we're gonna solve an inequality. And when you solve an inequality, you wanna be thinking about the direction and or um, colored in, not colored in, all that good stuff. So I like to get all the X's to the left side because it'll be easier to read later. So I'm gonna add three X's over here. So I'll have 4x plus 22 greater than or equal to negative 10. I'm going to take away 22. So I have 4x is greater than or equal to negative 32. And then I'm dividing by 4. So when I'm done, my x is greater than or equal to negative 8 which is what you get when you do 32 divided by four. So I'm gonna throw down a number here and say, okay, this is negative eight. It's greater than or equal to, so I color it in. And then I'm gonna zoom off here to the right because that's where you go when you're talking about a greater than. Part B is one of those in-betweens. So I'm gonna go ahead and take away the three from all the parts. So two is less than two X is less than nine. Except for that 11 minus three is eight. Now I need to divide everything by two. It is not negative, it's just positive. So I get a one is less than X is less than four. So the alligator mouse are always moving over, and this one should have been or equals to because it was up here. So it just say, stays the same. So it has to be between a one and a four. So if this is one, two, three, four, those problems, excuse me, those solutions would actually work in that problem. There aren't any or ones for us to practice. Okay. So I'm gonna take away three here. This is another between. I'm expecting like a little segment. Oops, those don't cancel, sorry. These cancel. Here I get negative 16 with a negative two X in the middle and negative 10 on the right. But I'm gonna divide everything by negative two. And as soon as you are dividing by a negative, you know you're gonna flip your symbols. So this will turn into a positive eight, and this will turn into one X, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, this will turn into five. Of course I'm choking. Okay, but, um, oops, I made a little mistake. I did the thing that I told you never to do, and that is I said I was gonna flip it, and then I didn't. So this turns into eight. This flips around, these cancel, this flips around, and I get a five. Only thing is, when I graph it, number line order, five's gonna be somewhere, and then six, seven, eight is gonna be to the right of it. So you could, if you want to rotate the whole thing around, and have the five on the left and then have the symbols opening the way they need to so that they're identical. So this or this are the two different ways to write your solution. Um, at the five end, it's open because it's greater than here or less than look in here. At the eight end, it's or equals to, and then you're looking at everything in between. So like a little dumbbell of sorts. Okay, I am going to call that quits. So I'm going to stop this video and I will upload that for you. And then I will make another video tomorrow and upload that as well. So you can just watch the parts that you really need in order to be prepared for our celebration of knowledge on Friday. Bye.